Hi, everyone. Welcome back again to the Iconist Podcast with your host. I am Barry 3D, and on my side is DJ Rod C. Hey. Did it. <laughs> okay, stop. 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 Take it in. Take it in. Take it in. What's up, people? What you do? What, how you? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is good. I hope everyone is is, is not getting too stressed during these times. And, and we're not going to talk about these times because we know the times we're in. If you turn on the news, it's just everywhere. So welcome for your escape for the day. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know where to find me. You can find me at Barry3D.com. Um, and, and all the links for everything is there. You know, we're going to give a round of shout outs, right? So let's just do it right away and get this out of the way. Here we go. First of all, uh, thank you to the man who makes us look so pretty on the screen and puts up all our templates and everything. Who are we talking about, Rod? J Bird. J Bird Digital Arts. Man, thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year and thank you. So Jaybird Digital Arts, he's the one that makes us look so pretty. If you need anything done, wait to the end of the video, see uh, his, his contacts over there, scan the flow code, and then you'll see and be able to reach out to Jay and get some work done for yourself if you got a project in mind. doesn't matter if it's uh, you know, a physical or a digital project, you've got your hookup. Uh, great. Next man we've got to talk about is Mr. Paul Ash. Mr. Paul mm -hmm. Ash, actor, comedian, uh, and, and all-around good guy. You could find him with Battlecom. They talk funny. The check in, and he and and that's it. He does live shows when those get started again. He'll be there, and you can catch him on the small screen. He's in different roles all across. Yeah, you can even see yeah. Paul Ash on Ghost. <laughs> yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Episode possession. Episode possession. Episode possession. That's the episode right there. Possession. It's we'll see Paul Ash. You know, look for him. Look for me. I'm on some of his projects too. So that's another one. Uh, Jim Aldridge, we call him Jimmy English. He does uh, Back to the Balcony. Yeah, mm. Jimmy, J Jimmy's funny, funny, funny man. So great stand-up comedian, all around nice guy. He's going to say, no, I'm not. Uh, yes, he is. All around nice guy. Back to the Balcony. You know, look for the microphone on the red background. Definitely check him out and, and see what's on there. And of course, I'm on there as a guest sometimes and going to be others on there. And speaking of others, mm. then I got, you know, we call the Fab Four. <laughs> no, not the Beatles. We, the Canadian version of, uh, you know, Blue nice. Collar TV uh, or, or the Canadian version of Plastic Cut Boys, how you want to look at it. We nice. are a touch of gray. And that is, nice. you know, Thomas Patrice, myself, Barry 3D Carter, Zolf Ali, who's over in Dubai, lucky guy, and the man who puts it together, the one and only Mr. Dave Sokolowski. Thank you very much. Like, Multiple videos you. drop weekly. You know, we talk about a range of topics uh, on video, uh, you know, on our YouTube channel, from funny to serious. You know, some make you go, what? And some make you go, oh. Uh, and then, of course, check us live. You, you can't miss us live either. So uh, we do a lot of live shows, fundraisers, and, and we're touring all around. So nice. support. <laughs> and, and Yeah. You know, and when it comes to support, I'm going to support my boy, Wayne Tennant. Uh, look for Wayne Tennant on, on Spotify. He just dropped his album a couple of weeks ago. Uh, very, very good singer. Phenomenal. Super nice guy. I've worked with him before, too, because I used to be a hip-hop dancer. And, you know, Rod's a DJ, so someone had to dance to the music. Yep. Dance go. to the music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then the last uh, couple of things is uh, if you got to go to a comic book, support the, support the arts. Support the, mm -hmm. support the books. So if you're in Montreal, make a trip over to the South Shore, just on Tash Row Boulevard. Look up Check Swings. Ask for Trevor. He's the owner. If he isn't there, you'll see Dom or Pierre. Uh, one of them will help you out and find what you got to go. From sports cards to comic books, they'll help you out. And for our friends here in Ontario, where's the place to go? Do the drive. Head out to Kitchener. When in Kitchener, go to WOW Comics. Wow. Wow. Warehouse of Wonder. Wonder. Yeah. Two floors. I think it's like almost like 15,000 square feet. He has half a, you know, half a million comic books in there from back issues to uh, new issues, statues, yeah. uh, magazines, hard to find mm -hmm. gems. Let's just put it this way. When you go to your comic book store and you say, hey, man, can you get me a book? And the comic book guy goes, uh, yeah, give me a week. He reaches out to them and they ship it out to him. <laughs> hmm. Go straight yeah. to the source. Go straight to the source. There you go. Right to the source. You might find some other stuff. You're like, I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go go to the souls wow 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 and, warehouse and, of wonders does it for you in kitchener okay I, cool I'm done. yeah yeah done myself of itch. course if you are here and you're watching this show thank <laughs> you 
thank you. Thank you. Uh, remember, support the Iconis podcast. You can find us at uh, Iconis dot podbean.com you can find us wherever you get your podcast from we are all over on all those platforms and uh, if you're not sure look out for the iconist um, you know we have a coffee uh, so you can donate to the page if you and, and if you want to give us a tip help us buy a coffee keep us awake so we can keep you know doing all the reading and everything we need to do for this show we enjoy Woo! coffee any coffee any coffee yeah so and 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 any coffee Oh, sorry. So it's my turn? Okay, it's cool. Turn, so you know what? That's where you can find me. No, I'm just, I know. I'm just waiting for the intro. So anyway, listen, where you can find me, that's great. You can find everybody. You can find me. You can find me on Twitch. Uh, you know what? Let's go for it. You can find me on Instagram at Mr. Rod C. That's my tag. You can find me there, you know, posting all the stuff I'm doing, you know, the jack, the, the gigs I'm doing, you know, the interactions I'm doing with a lot of people. Also find me on Twitch at DJ Rod C. Basically have a weekly show. Uh, multiple times I'm popping in and just having great, you know, atmosphere with a crowd. Everyone's having fun. Um, as the time you're speak, watching this, should have something coming up this Saturday, which will be the, this is, if we're doing this one, that is the 22nd. So I'll have an event there. So make sure you check me out. Twitch.tv forward slash DJ Rod C. Right. Me, have some fun. Make sure you just pass through and just say, hey, I remember seeing, I saw you on the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Let's have some fun. Right on. And if anyone shows up and you hear about the Iconist podcast and you want to talk to Rod, go right up to Rod, look him straight in the eye, say, hey, man. Or if you see him on Twitch, just say, hey, heard you on the Iconist podcast. P.S. Saturday love. That's all you got to say. Wow. Okay. And that's a code word. That's a code word. <laughs> okay. Saturday love. Got to play. Saturday love. Good. I will do that. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, love. I know I can't sing. This is why I talk and crack jokes and I dance, right? Let me have my fun. So there you go. And mm -hmm. on the show today is a continuation mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. last week's show. Part G. Part, Part G. G. The deuxième G. partie. Ooh, that's that deeper. Huh? Yeah. Deuxième partie. Oh. The deuxième partie. Oui, oh. j'ai parlé oh. vous français. Hein? Hey, Les chips, so, oh. man. <laughs> Excusez-moi. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, poutine extra fromage. <laughs> Belle province. La, la fleurs. There we go. Okay. You, if you know me, you know me. I like what I like. Oh. So we talking about part two mm. of G.I. Joe. Jo. Wow. The Yo, movie. Joe. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. Look. So the movie <sighs> came out. Mm. We had a good time. We talked a very... Uh, the part one we talked about very over you know top view of it now yeah we getting into the nitty-gritty and let's we're gonna do it trying to do it as best as we can and and and, and now let's have some fun with it that, that that's exactly what it comes down to let's do it. so who gi joe man yeah. i loved it so out in 1987 that's when a movie came out as we told you before mm -hmm. um first movie out from hasbro was transformers the movie and then gi joe the movie uh you know i think there was also like you know uh was it Strawberry Shortcake, the movie? Hey, hey, this one kills me, right? They had the names of the show, and all they say is, like, we need a good name, something catchy. The movie. All right? For Transformers, the movie. Ah, oh, okay. Got a ring to it. Next. G.I. Joe, the movie. Got a ring. I like it. Strawberry Shortcake, right, the talk. movie. Oh, let's do it. I think we see a theme. <laughs> mm -hmm. It could have been, like, you know, G.I. Joe. Like, the, 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 the TV My show had G.I. Joe, Rise of Serpentor. Ooh, okay, okay. All right, Rise of Serpentor. This could have been like G.I. Joe versus Cobra Law. No, G.I. Joe, the movie. <laughs> hey, My Little Pony, the movie. The movie, My Little Pony, that's it. My Little Pony, the movie. <laughs> that's all it was. We didn't need much back in the 80s. <laughs> Seems like it. Seems you know, like it. it's like, what are you going to see? I'm going to see G.I. Joe, the movie. <laughs> Just let you know, it's not the show. It's, it's the movie. The movie. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> right? Uh, it, it was it, direct to the point that, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, here's G.I. Joe, the series. G.I. Joe, the movie. <laughs> so you can tell it's not the same. G.I. Yeah. Joe, the comic book. There, there you go. Just making sure it's everybody's distinct by themselves. G.I. Joe, the comic. Okay. The comic. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I must find that part really funny. So the movie kicks off. We, we see it start off. It starts off with that amazing, and I'm not even being sarcastic, amazing theme song. Like, I would watch the movie. And then rewind the movie and then start the movie again just to hear the theme song. 
crashing through the light. Cobra. Cobra. <laughs> Intro hype. Oh. Like that, like that, oh that song. There, there's certain songs that make a movie or TV show. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this throughout the whole episode. I, I don't listen to that. That's all good. Too late. Right? We're all in. We're all in. And. <laughs> And there's certain things that make that show, make that movie, movie. And this song set the tone. It Come was on. edgy. It was action. It it elicited a feeling, an emotion in you when you heard it. Yes. And it left you wanting more, which means it did what it had to do. Because when the whole G- Cobra verse was done and it got into G.I. Joe, I was like, no, man, rewind it back. Right. Rewind exactly. Back. Right, listen, it, it was basically, they only had one assignment. The one assignment was to get you on the edge of your seat. You were completely on the edge of your seat with that. Like we said before on the last on the last segment, that song just made you want to just like saying, oh, someone's going, someone's going to get hurt today. Someone's going to lose. A, someone's going to get hurt real bad today. Day, That's right? all it was like, like woo, let's see what's happening. But yeah. And Let then the G.I. Joe part of it, like, right. it's like, okay, lighten back up, just, just. Just go back to the first verse. Just go back to the first yeah, verse. Yeah, yeah. And, and you said it so in, in in the last episode. I'm not sure if we had that part on air and all that. You were saying, I, I remember we were cracking jokes. I'm not sure if it was on air or off air. But you were saying, who who signs up to, to join Cobra? Like, you know, you join G.I. Joe. Come on and, now. And, and, and it's like, okay, well, you know, you're joining up the army. You're fighting for honor, truth, land, j- justice, all that, you know, whole thing. That's right, G.I. Joe, right? Why sign up for Cobra? What's, what's the draw to sign up for Cobra? What's- What's the incentive? Like, are you getting a good Delta plan? What is it? What what kind of benefits are you getting? Are you getting something better than the average man? That's probably why you're enticing them in. Listen, we're going to give you an extra, uh, extra like 50 grand on your, on your annual salary. Oh, that's not bad. And we got a wonderful dental plan. (laughs) Dental plan. Listen, needs braces. Dental plan. (laughs) Telling you. Right. That's it. This this is the only way I can see how people keep supporting. It was, it must've been crazy because exactly going back, like we, like I said on the previous one, when that sh- when that show starts, when the song starts, they start off like Barry was saying. There's their version of the helicopter carrier, yeah. And you're just seeing, it's just like an engulf of just blue soldiers just flying out, parachuting out, yes. paratroopers coming down, whatever the case may like. Yo, we got to remind yourself that's a big ship, and if that's a big ship, it must mean it holds a lot of people. Oh, yeah, you can clearly see there's a lot of people working that shift today. Holy, right? Like, Be- how, did, how did you get them there? How do you get them there? That's what I like to know. Well, it's the theme song, because you see, what is what is what does the army have? The army turns around and they look at you and they have that poster yeah. with Uncle Sam, you know, and it's like, I want you, and that's how they get you. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sign up and see the world, and uh, you know, and and fight for my country. Yeah, I'm all for that. But then someone sitting in a dark alley, you know, it's like when you go to a club. When you here, this is an example. When you go to a club and you see everyone lined up outside the club, and then you say, man, I want to get into this club. So you got a friend says, yo. Go around the corner. I know somebody. Code word is Cobra. Okay. And you walk around this corner in a dark alley and you hear the music playing. And you're like, oh man, this is lit. I got to get up in there. This is my jam. I'm leaving people at the door. And then, you know, you knock on this rusted steel door and a thing slides over. It's like, shh, can I help you? And it's like, Cobra. Cobra. Come on in. And all yours. It's like, woo, the music's got me. I'm getting drawn in. I'm getting drawn in. Drawn I, in. I was thinking, I, I was actually thinking we were gonna do the, the, the reverse in, in the sense like um flashing back to um back to the future. In the early edition, you see the person in the van and they got you know, they're just driving back, got the music blaring out of the van just going down the street. Yeah. Follow that van. <laughs> right? Sign me up. Yeah. It, it's like that, the ice that, cream that. truck. When you hear the ice cream truck come around with that music and you just go running, you 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 mind your business. Yo, 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 yo. What you got a remix for that? Let me tell you. It's the music. All I gotta do is play that theme song and you're ready to join up. Because what happened is when we did episode one, we do these episodes about a, a, a week apart. They come out a week apart, but we do them maybe a couple of days apart at times you know, taking off the, moving the, 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 the curtain. Mm-hmm. And we did part one. So first of all, I watched G.I. Joe the movie, right? Because mm-hmm. you watch it on YouTube for free, it's on the Hasbro channel. So I watched G.I. Joe the movie. 
And then I, that, that, that theme song was stuck in my head. And then we did episode one and we talked about the theme song and it was stuck in my head for days, days. <laughs> you understand that? Days. I get up to go to work and, and all I hear is crushing through. Ah! And you know when you get a song stuck in your head? It, it's just okay. this. It's, it, sometimes it's annoying. And no matter what, you, my mm. boss is talking to me and I'm like crashing through the. Ah! He's like, you okay, Barry? Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, Joe. What? Nothing. And you have to let it go through its whole. That's the OCD. Have to. I have to complete. You, you, you the, have to him. complete the task. You know, driving home, no matter what's on the radio, crashing through, you know, um, you know, daughter talking to me. I'm talking about cleaning up your room, clean up your room, crashing through. Uh, What? Nothing, nothing. Daddy, daddy got to go to sleep. You know, sleep it off. I got to sleep it off. I got to sleep. Right. Wife talking to me. My eyes glaze over, crashing through the night. Are you picking up the cat litter? Yeah, cat litter. Go, Cobra. What? (laughs) The glaze. Cobra. See, and that's the worst thing. So if this song is stuck in any of your heads, you're welcome. <laughs> I ain't gonna say I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing. Misery loves company. You're welcome. Uh, uh, meet me around the corner. Meet me, me around by the, the corner. <laughs> Cobra, Cobra. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, listen, I, I, I mean, listen, we we can continue like we did last time. We 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 just we just we just hung up on on the on, on the internet. <laughs> just wonderful. So so yeah, so let's let's see now. So we start. It starts off with that. Uh-huh. Um, now now my mind is completely blank. So thank <laughs> you, Barry, because now it is in my head, and now I'm here. Is Cobra? Okay. Cobra. How do we? How do we? How do How did How did this start? How did this start? How right. So start? they come down. They do the parachute. They do the whole. Hey, yeah. um, you know, Statue of Liberty. Pass the, pass the intro. Pass the intro. Pass the intro. Bring, 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 bring. Right. Okay. Okay. We're gonna get past the intro for now. Okay. We passed our intro. We passed GI Joe the, the movie intro. <laughs> And then it opens up um, uh, at the Terra Dome. If I remember right, the first scene is at the Terra Dome with, uh, you know, Serpentor being uh, yelling oh, at yes, Cobra Commander. Yes, yes, yes. Right. It, it opens up right away with Impotent the bad fools. guys. Impotent yeah. fools. Impotent fools. Impotent fools. Ah, his vocabulary is, ex- it is exquisite. <laughs> you know, and, and this is what gets me. And I like that that's how they tied this part together. So he, Serpentor is in the room. He's got all the top guys from Cobra sitting there and he's blasting them all, you know, impotent fools. Uh, and they're doing a whole round table. And then Cobra Commander is like, oh, shut up. It, it, this is all the, our, our, our defeats at G.I. Joe's hands are your fault, Serpentor, because you're not a good leader. So now tempers are starting to flare. Did he now, just say that? What crazy is he doing? I remember saying that I was dying with laughter. Yeah. Him around the back, like, did he just, did he just say that? What's wrong with him? Has he lost his mind? I'm like dying of laughter. Like, go, man, right? go. And then he says the phrase. He goes, you know, you can't make me your patsy. I was like, call back. <laughs> As a youngin, when I watched this original series and the movie, um, I liked the callback aspect. As a comedian, you try to do the callback. Call, that means you do a joke, you, you go through the whole thing, you do a joke, and you have one line that hits, and then you go, um, you know, to our audience that's listening, and you go, you know, a couple of more jokes in, and then you just say that one line that fits I, into your present joke, but makes the audience jump back to the original piece of that joke, that original bit, you know, and yeah. that's what you call a callback, and what the writers did was a callback, because in G.I. Joe, arise, or Pinto, arise. And part five, at the very end of it, they've turned around, they've taken over America, G.I. Joe comes in, Cobra's losing, they're now retreating, so Pentor is about to get on to, uh, you know, the, the, the jet there and, and fly off, and Cobra Commander comes running up saying, don't leave me behind, you got to save me, so Pentor, he's like, why would I do that, I don't need you, you know, and he goes, no, 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 you know what, you need me, because anytime that your plans don't work out, you're going to need a scapegoat, you're going to need a patsy. And I can be that person because they're going to realize at one point, you're not the perfect leader that they think you are. I can see through that, that you're going to have mistakes and you're going to need someone to blame. Let me be your patsy. Patsy. And exactly. And that's what he said. And that's, he says, and and Serpentor kind of stops for like a couple of seconds. It's fine. Get on the, get on the jet. You know, it's like, thank you. Okay. They take off. Now they go through that all their season with Serpentor being around. And then it comes to the movie, the movie, and it comes to the movie. (laughs) And the first thing he says is, I'm not going to be your patsy anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's what the rest of, you know, because nobody else in Cobra knows that, oh, that Cobra Commander made that deal 
with Sepentor. It mm-hmm. shows you that either Sepentor is that hot tempered and he, he just gets caught up in his own, you know, emotion because he's missing Sensu's DNA, which would keep him like more level headed. Because all the other mm-hmm. leaders that he's, he's been made from are hot headed leaders. He needed someone to mellow him out, and that person's DNA is missing. So he's that's why he's always yelling and he's always so aggressive and and mm-hmm. agitated impatient he now has had enough pay he's lost his patience and he's just doing what he normally does is blame cobra commander right everyone's like what you can't be doing that like, that's unheard of and cobra commander is like oh yeah well uh my colleagues can defend my character and and you know uh how i've led cobra over the years right oh and it's like so Pender straight up right defend him if you can no problem and the first person up is destro <laughs> And Destro just lambases him. He, you know, you are a buffoon. Uh, you're this, you're that, you're, you know, and he nails he, he, all his unqualities. <laughs> yes. Right? And he's like, what? What are you doing, Destro? And everyone's kind of rumbling in the background. And then Dr. Mindbender steps up. And I said, oh, you know what? You're absolutely, you know what? You're right. You're right. No, no, no. You know, you're right. You're right. You obviously forgot. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Just, yeah, just... and he goes uh, through the list. Doctor Benderberg goes through the list, and he goes, "Oh yes, and your extreme acts of cowardness." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Oh snap, <laughs> snap!" But my man is opportunistic because at this point, this is when uh, Pythona comes in there, and, and, and she, you know, she comes from the outside, mm-hmm. and you know, you see, she's just a robe figure, and she goes through security, gets through the guards, gets past the yes. televipers makes it into the, the, you know, the throne room through all the traps. When this is happening, they say, oh, hit the alarm. Someone's coming. We got to, def- you know, defend Sependra because Sependra was getting up to fight. And they're like, no, you're the Cobra Emperor. If you go, we lose you. We can't go back to Cobra Commander. So you stay here in the bunker and be safe. And then, mm-hmm. you know, right away, Cobra Commander's like, that's right. If he if he's gone, uh, I'm Cobra, back in charge. I'm back in charge. You all try to protect him. No problem. Yeah, let's come on, guys. Let's go and save some Pentor. And, and let's save sudden, our leader. Save oh, our me. leader. I don't think you wait a minute. You both have had this man on trial, and now this man is leading the charge. And for them, they think his motivation is he wants to show that he's still a useful member for Cobra. Hmm. To his luck, he sees the so-called assassin mm-hmm. and is like, where'd you go? Uh, that way. And Cobra Commander sends all the troops to the other yeah, side other on direction. purpose hilarious uh-huh what 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 why stop what's about to happen mm-hmm. you know so this is what i liked on on that whole scene she finally gets there explains who she is explains about cobra law explains what's needed how he how serpenter came to be it wasn't dr mindbender they put the information in mindbender's head how they want to get the uh what is it the bet as they call it the broadcast energy transmission energy transmission yep I, i'm like First, I saw BET. I thought it was the channel. Ah, <laughs> oh, hilarious! <laughs> oh, so true. Oh, so true. What killed me with the BET is like every single time you notice that every time they refer to the BET is always the BET, the broadcast energy transmitter. The BET, the broadcast energy transmitter. Yeah. Always had to word it completely out, like just making sure there's no distinction. No, we're not talking about the channel. We're not coming after the channel. We're coming after the broadcast energy transmitter. The broadcast, I'm like, okay, okay. I think we understood. I think we understood. So, sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but you'll realize no, that. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Bet but it was hilarious. On that. <laughs> but it was hilarious. It was it way was past hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, so it gets so, in there. You know, they say that's what they need. Then it flashes over to G.I. Joe. Uh, and when it gets to G.I. Joe, it's, it's showing them up in the Himalayas, testing out the energy, you know, the broadcast energy transmitter, right? Right. Um, they say, okay, let's start it up. And broadcast energy to explain what it does. You know, it starts off um, uh, cross uh, cross countries havoc takes off. He Joe's chasing after it. They're all laughing, <laughs> and you see cross countries start running back without his back, without the havoc. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like, like run first down. he takes off, like wait, 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 wait. Then he comes back, go, 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 go. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so hilarious. Go, 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 go. I'm like, oh, he's so hilarious. Yeah. Uh. And, and I and that whole fight that was pure action on both sides. And what I like in there is it's not the big action. 
but I like the, the attention to detail. What I mean is they use a mm. lot of the toys that you've never seen in the TV show right. or very rarely in the comic book. And they showed up there. So uh, GI Joe, you could, you know, back when they first came out, you're able to buy these little drones. They weren't, they weren't um, machines that anyone could, a figure could fit into. It just had like four wheels, some guns on it. That's all it mm-hmm. was. It came sometimes in special sets with other characters and they put them in there. Right. I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. Okay, you guys are paying. So, f- so far, you've done a callback. You paid attention to the lore. You're bringing in the smaller things that they would use if they had access to it. And it's nice to see that if you're going to be a show that's going to be promoting a, a, a toy mm-hmm. or, or based off of toys, use those toys in the show. Completely. Completely. You know? And and that, and, I, and I liked how that whole thing broke down until, you know, um, and, and as I know there's no bust about it. You know, of course, you know, Cobra takes their, their lumps. Serpentor gets captured. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was that was funny too. Like, and, and funny in the sense that, again, Cobra Commander is used, using opportunity, like seeing that basically, Baroness was with Cobra Commander and just basically lo- noticing, like saying, Serpentor is being attacked. Let's go save him, Cobra Commander. No, 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 it's okay. Don't worry about him. Listen, we gotta go. We gotta still concentrate on the Joes. And looking over, <laughs> like, uh huh, you're fighting someone by yourself. Cool, take him down, Joes. And she's like fighting back. No, 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 no. You gotta go hell to the Sprinter. No, no, no. It's okay. He's a oh shoot, he's down. <laughs> Retreat! <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> Retreat! And all you hear is Destro? My better in Destro's together. So I think it's Destro as I say, who yelled out? Retreat! <laughs> <Who killed you? laughs> Come out. Retreat! 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 Cobra! Retreat! Where are we going? Don't worry about it. I know I know a way out of here. I know this area. Retreat! <laughs> I'm like, again, in Cobra's mind, it captures Suprentor. He's out the books. Cobra's mind again. I'm like, yep. You, you, sorry, guy. Sly dog. He bladed sorry, him, man. Put the, he put the blade in the back of him. He bladed him, you know? Um, and they take off. They go. And he's like, oh, I know this area. I know a place where we can go. Don't worry about it. And mm. Cobra Commander, for the first time, goes back to his home turf, which is right. Cobra Law. Right. Now, there's, I mean, with G.I. Joe the whole time, this is where the, you know, like. It's the, separated. The, it separates. This is where the TV separates from the comic book. Because in the comic book, Cobra Commander is human, 100%, no question asked. In this one, we finally find out Cobra Commander is a citizen. He's, he's what, a lord? Anyways, high up citizen. Yeah, it's, it was a sci- he was a scientist. No, 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 no. You're right. He was a he was a lord. He was a lord of sorts, but who was also was a scientist. But yes. he was a lord in there as well. Yes. Right. And when he gets uh, there, you know, he asks all lunch a lot about it. It's like, oh, hey, he starts talking to people. Uh, I'm back, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you. Ah, da, 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 da. Props. Why did you hit me? It's <laughs> Walter. You're not worthy to be back here. Uh, but anyway, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I, no, jumped no, no. I jumped ahead to the beatings. It yeah. was funny. He oh, thinking he loved by everybody, and they just like really believe this guy. You believe this guy's coming back right now after right. what he. You know, he, he was got a little bit too big for his britches. He walked in. He was like, "Yeah, this is my house. Uh, this is where I'm from." He's like, "Hey, Nemesis Enforcer!" And, and got five across the eyes. Literally, <laughs> right. <laughs> So his homecoming was short lived and very, you know, not not ceremonious like he thought it would be. Gets back in there, and 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 this is where you and when he said things separate. As I said, this is where you find out Cobra Commander is not human, or mm-hmm. it starts to lead that way because even in the comic, sorry, the TV show, even though he talked very with a hissy noise, I don't know if that was ever the intention at, from the very first episode of GI Joe right. Right. to make Cobra Commander non human. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they've alluded to certain things at the odd time in the series. Like there's one time I think it was Destro that walked in and he saw, and it's over Cobra Commander's shoulder, right? And he's mm-hmm. eating. So he has his helmet off. The only person can see him, it, how it, they did the scene, the framing, is Destro looking at him. Or reflection. And, right? And, and Cobra Commander is eating and he's like, oh, Cobra Commander, put your helmet on, you know? Uh, he's like, oh, what's wrong, Destro? You can't handle my face when, I, when I'm eating? And he's like, oh. So you, obviously you know there's something different about Cobra Commander's face. Mm-hmm. And that's the only time they kind of touched on it. But it could have been disfigured like sto- like um, Snake Eyes, right? right. We, we didn't know what was wrong with him, you know? Uh, 
So I don't know if that was ever the intentional. And I mean, sure, there's blogs out there that would say yes, no, you know, and I, and I haven't read them. I, I've got to look them up, but I don't know if that was the intention. So when they got to Cobra La, it, it starts to finally say, okay, well, we're, we're, we're making this more sci-fi. He's not human. Right. And, and this is where I was wondering too, because like you said, the distinction of the comic books and the cartoon that, well, I mean, the, the, the series versus the movie that they, uh, <laughs> that you thought going lower sci-fi. I like you saying in the last, in our last uh, broadcast in regards to the comic book and them just went left and right. They're just, you know, didn't see eye to eye. I would now had a, a conversation with someone. We were talking about it actually. And he was like saying, you know what, back in the eighties, all the talk was always about, you know, war you know war like terrorism you know terror all terrorist attacks and terrorist attacks, and terrorist yeah, attacks. Yeah. so maybe their concept was like thinking like okay we're not going to bombard it's obvious gi joe is it's a military type of division yeah let's do something completely left and go completely left and do more sci-fi for this and see how it goes from there right okay i can see that and and, and that's why i'm like i when, I'm, when my friend mentioned it and we we're talking like you know what? I never thought of it from that aspect of, of the 80s, Reagan and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Gorbachev and stuff like on that line. So they were like, okay, you know what? I could I could look for that point. So maybe that's a that's a, maybe another vision or a viewpoint on why the sci-fi aspect was kind of pulled in more on the table, put on the table more versus what it yeah. should have been. Yeah, no, no, I'm not knocking it. I can see it. I mean, look, I, I said I'm a fan of the movie. I like the movie. I, I'm not going to, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, they shouldn't have done this. No, I, I was mm -hmm, along mm -hmm. the ride from beginning to end. I said, clearly the theme song had me, brought me up to this. So we, you know, and we get the Cobra Law. He gets in there, he gets taken prisoner. He goes and meets Globulus. He meets, you know, Pythona officially, Nemesis right. Enforcer, who just grunts, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cool characters. And, and, and I, you know, and it was interesting, as I said, that they brought in all the voice actors that we said in part one. So Globulus is played by Burgess Meredith, who played the original Penguin. From the mm -hmm. Batman with Adam West, Burt Ward played uh, uh, Rocky's trainer in Rocky One, Two, and Three. You right. know, uh, so I I I'd like that. You know, um, and then it's of course you're pulling in some big names and they're having some fun with it. The animation was nice. The story so far, okay, you, that was a big. Oh wait a minute, this is more sci-fi. Okay, and I like sci-fi, so I'm still mm -hmm. on board with it. And right. I mean, come on, they had a character called Sci-Fi in the GI Joe team anyway, so we're okay. We're good. We we good. We good. Let's go. Let's go. They go forward. Um, and then from there they make the plans and say, okay, we've got to rescue Serpentor out of the G.I. Joe camp. And then it was my favorite group of guys. Like for me, I like hmm. Tomax and Zamot and Zartan and the Dreadnoughts. Those those are the ones that I like. Anytime they're on the screen, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna look. Mm -hmm. You know, those are my boys right there. And all you see is Zartan saying. Why should we turn around our risk guard next to go and deal with him? And Pythona pulls out this gem that's bigger than both of her hands put together. I mean, she's holding it in one hand, but that's how big this gem is. And my boy Zartan, his eyes open up and he's like, a gem of that size answers all my questions. <laughs> Mercenary. Like hilarious. Mark. Mark. I see money. I see, I see money. I see money. I see money in that hand. Yeah, that answered all the questions, baby. I'm a good. I'm good. I'm all right, my dad. He called it straight out. He was right to his character because he's a mercenary. Even though he works for Cobra, he's a mercenary. They hire him in the Dreadnoughts. You know what I mean? They pay them on top of whoever else is getting paid. Everyone else's salary, my man gets paid for job, and he gets paid well. And that's all it was is a gem of that size answers all my questions. That line stuck with me. I'm like, okay, he had a price. You know when you go to work and your boss says, hey, man, we want you to take this position. And you're thinking to yourself, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? If you want me to do that position, you would have to throw me a ton of money. You hear me? And you would have to throw me a ton of money. And then all of a sudden they come back with twice as much as what you're you thought. He's like, man, if I was to do that role, I ain't take that position. They'd have to pay me like 90000 We'll pay you 160. A salary of that size <laughs> answers <laughs> all my questions. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Exactly. As a comedian, I was turning around and I was doing a show and someone's like, Barry, man, we want you to drive all the way out here and we want you to do a stand-up comedy show 
And I'm like, I ain't going all the way out there, man. You know how much money it takes me to drive there? It's, that's like a four-hour drive. And then I got to go there just to do 20 minutes. I ain't doing out there. Uh, Barry, the show pays $10,000 cash, no taxes. A salary of that size answers all my questions. My questions. Right? Please note, everyone, make sure that you, um, next time you use that particular phrase, please make sure you tag us and let us know how you use it. This would be the phrase of 2022. Something of that size will answer all my questions. Right? I'll just say that word just like that. Yeah. However you want to use it, just let us know. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's there's jokes I can make with that, but I don't make it exactly. on this channel. That's why I'm like saying that's what that's why I'm like saying I'll leave it like that. Okay, you gotta follow Barry 3D to find out what's gonna happen with that one. Watch me. I got a okay. TikTok. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that's why I get raw and gully. So that 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 was what kills me with Zartan. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's my boy. He knew what his price was. Yeah. And then, you know, it goes over to the G.I. Joe. And this is what they're bringing the other characters right now, right? So they're at the base. Um, they're talking about, we got to go, mm -hmm. and, you know, we got to hide the broadcast energy transmitter. We have to guard Sepentor. We have to, up, you know, because people were injured during the attack. Or it was, no, it was after that. But, you know, the new troops. So I know we're going to be jumping certain parts, but, you know, we're we're, so right, right, right. we're bringing in the new troops. So the, the new troops is uh, Jinx, Chuckles, Law mm -hmm. and Order, you know, um, Tunnel, Tunnel Rat. Tunnel Rat. Mm -hmm. Right? Lieutenant Falcon. Mm -hmm. And your boy. Man. Big Law. Big Law. Big, Big Law. Big Law. Uh, Big, like, Lob. Big Lob, yeah. Is it Big Lob or Big La? Lob. Lob. Oh, Lob. L-O-B. 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 Oh, Lob. I always thought it was L-A. Yeah. No, big no, no, no. See, that's to show you how little I care about this particular character. Big Law. Because <laughs> I thought he was like L.A., like L.A., you know, basketball. Okay. Ah, gotcha, 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 right, gotcha. Right, right, So Big Lob. Okay, all right. That makes a little bit more sense of the name, but still can't. I'm not a fan of this one character. Some <laughs> characters you like in G.I. Joe, some others you don't. I mean, if some people like the character, good on you. Explain me to, explain to me why. I, I'm not knocking you. I just want to know what your appeal is to this uh. Big Lob character. And, I, and then we can, you know... I ain't gonna bash your choice. I'm just gonna ask you who else you like. So that that's all it is. So big lob. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Bye. Bye. We, we we already answered that last time. We I just want to say bye. 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 So big lob comes in. So they go through the basic training and bring in all the individual characters or quirks and see mm -hmm. how they are. Chuckles never speaks. Never. And I no. was like waiting the whole time. I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're just going to keep it quiet. And he'll say one word at the uh -huh. very end, uh, you know, but he never spoke, never spoke throughout this show. I was no. like, okay. No. But in the comic so, book, you can't get him to shut up. Really? Okay. In the comic book, he, he comes in, I think in GI Joe 49 or 59. Anyways, they bring in like the new characters. I, I, I remember the cover artist was Mike Zek and he drew some of the GI Joe stuff. So Mike Zek is really known well for drawing, um, um, uh, 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 Marvel Secret, uh, Secret Wars, Secret Wars, okay, yeah, the original Secret Wars. If you look at that, all the art is done by Mike Zek, right? Mm. If you look at Punisher, because he took on Punisher at one point or Punisher War Journal, he did the art for that. So, Mike Zek has a very unique style. He did, um, uh, Deathstroke the Terminator when Deathstroke started off with his own series, he did the covers on them, they're really well done because Mike Zek is really good at drawing weapons, really, mm. like, he draws weapons like so well. You know, and his characters are always in these action poses, and you can tell how he, it's him because he draws his feet a certain way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mike Zek, so he was a one. If you look at, you know, Secret Wars issue number eight, when they bring in Spider Man with a black costume, that was Mike Zek. Mm -hmm. That whole 12 issue Maxi series, him. So, you know, um, uh, I, I, hold on, what was, where was my point? I, was, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I was talking to Mike Zek, I got excited. You were talking about, uh, Oh no, now you got me. Wait a minute. You were talking about you went into the basic training and then we went into big law. Chuckles. 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 We're talking about chuckles. Yes, yes, chuckles. So chuckles in the comic book. Thank you very much, Rod. Wow, mm -hmm. I had a moment. Chuckles in the comic book talks all the time. Chuckles right. is their like secret agent. He's he's their undercover agent in a big Hawaiian shirt. Like you Magnum PI. Magnum PI gun holster on on just like I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I uh, okay interesting he's he's yeah. chuckles and he's he's the joker like he's cracking jokes all the time but in, in gi joe the movie doesn't say a word 
well, now that explains why his nickname is Chuckles. Because I'm like thinking, why are you Chuckles? But you're not doing anything funny for me to laugh at you. Technically, but we'll get we'll get to that. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's not, that sounds nice. That sounds good. All right. So oh, from that jinx. point, yeah, jinx they bring in too and much. jinx. Go ahead. Yeah, you yeah, jinx. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so basically from that point, you know, basically through basic training with Beachcomber, and Beachcomber is just uh, no, Beachcomber is just having Beachhead. Sorry, Beachhead. Beachhead yes. is having too much fun with these guys in the sense like he's just annoyed. But like saying you guys are just doing everything so opposite. So like nothing is is there's no strict way or a precise way of training. Going back to Chuckles, this is why I say Chuckles didn't say anything. As a quick note, Chuckles is having um like an um like an RT an RTV fight, basically training, you know, trying to blow up a tank, and basically he's misfiring and it's not working. Chuckles doesn't say a word. Get out from the cabin. Goes inside, picks up the the the, the, the missile for a rocket launcher. The missile part throws over his shoulder, runs towards the tank. Yeah, boom, and I'm like. You're crazy, but she still ain't saying nothing. I'm like, like, wow, in- interesting. It just, it's just funny. Again, small little perk. Um, tunnel route is going for the off of the course, like Barry was saying earlier. He happened to see like I'm getting, I'm getting held down by, I'm held down by heavy fire, whatever the case would be. Oh, there's a sewer, there's a water sewer is right to the side of the thing. I'll take that. Now there's no way of evidence knowing that it's gonna come out on the other side. But he takes it. I'm like, boy, mm-hmm. you don't even know where this is going to take you. This might take you back to the latrine, and then you might just mess up, and then you mess up, and beast head be after you. Like, where is this guy? I let this guy I turn around. This guy was on the course, and he's gone. Took a whole, he, he took the sewers, chief. He just took off. Hilarious. Anywho, yeah. so he goes yeah. through all that. They, they'll go through all that. And then, as per usual, one of them was, um, where is Lieutenant Falcon? So, oh, man. So, was, hold on. Just before, little tidbit. There's and, and before we jump on the Lieutenant Falcon, yeah, yeah. do you know how G.I. Joe and the TV show Cops, the cartoon I'm talking, right? Yeah, okay, With yeah, Bulletproof, yeah. Do you know how yeah, the yeah, two yeah. of them are linked? G.I. Joe and, oh. and Cops with Bulletproof, right? That, that, that team, that cartoon there, well, you know, yeah, Big Boss and all that, yeah, 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 yeah. The, Private, you know, the two, you know, the two of them are linked, Private, I know, fighting crime in a future time. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can't remember. They never made it. They never made it. But if you look online, uh-huh. Beachhead's grandson is on the team of cops. Really? Yes, he is. I'm, I'm trying to find the name of his character. Um, but he because people noticed it. Right? People noticed it. When they looked at the character, and you know they always have their uh, their 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 data sheets, and they saw yeah. that Beachhead's name, the, his family name, and this other character had the same name as Beachhead, and then people were asking online, and it came out officially that was Beachhead's son. Hmm. Yeah. Y- yeah. It, it's you know. Uh, checkpoint. Checkpoint. I think it's I think checkpoint. It. Is it? Yeah, I'm pulling something out right now. Yeah, we should have had this, you know, ahead of time. He's one no, of the good guys. Say, wow, okay. A fifth-generation career soldier, a military officer who grew up in Alabama. His father referenced to the G.I. Joe character Wayne R. Beachhead Sneeden. Yep. Who served with a top, uh, stop, top, and anti-terrorist unit during the 80s and 90s. Okay. Yep. Checkpoint is related. Interesting. I'll we'll yep. follow up on that one. That's nice. Yep. Yep, and I'll see once again callback. Um, that, that, that's nice. something I think they should make a little bit more known. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, because uh, I, I, I think I, I like that they've they've made history that way. They've they've put stuff together. Same universe, basically. Same universe that tells you that cops takes place in the future, which means. You know, obviously, cops takes place in the future, but it means future, that right? you know, it's future fifth generation. So, yeah, his his great grandfather or whatever it is or how we want to do mm-hmm. it was uh, Beachhead from GI Joe. That means there's military in there. And how many times you hear that? That you know, you have a, a, someone that's, oh, my dad was in the army. I have joined the right. police force. Correct. That's normal. That that's that that's normal. So you know, mm-hmm. during the GI Joe run, you never see Beachhead dating anybody, but now we know that he settles down, has a family. Has kids, mm-hmm. obviously, and those kids go down to the point where they have that 
pride to know that their dad, or sorry, one of their relatives was in a secret military force. Um, and I'm going to follow through with, on great, great, great granddad's footsteps or great, great granddad's footsteps and, and do something for my country. So he's a police officer, joined a secret organization, but Beachhead, the, his line continues. And it's nice that it wasn't, you know, if they use Beachhead, they didn't say like, you know, the, the obvious choice could have been Duke. It could have been Hawk. It could have been Snake Eyes. You know, mm-hmm. it, it could have been Scarlet. They, they didn't go with the obvious choice. It really went with Beachhead. Out of yeah, how many best. hundreds of Joes they are. Correct. You know? And, like, you look at, and if you look at it right now, the, the, his name, Checkpoint's real name yeah. is Wayne R. Snyder III. Right. And Beachhead's name is Wayne R. Snyder. So it's the same. Basically, he's the, he's a third. I'm like, third yeah, third generation. Third. There we go. So it was, it was, his, grand, it was his grandfather. Okay, mm. so his grandfather was, and that's how Cops, the TV show, is linked to G.I. Joe. Very and nice. I think that's a, that would have been an interesting story if you had to write Cops more on a serious note. Um, mm-hmm. It would have been an interesting storyline to reference the history a few times in some episodes or in a comic book when they were doing the comic book. Uh, the only difference is the comic book was done by DC Comics for Cops and not Marvel. Mm. So that's where, you know, you got the toss up for the rights. So, you know, I believe it was DC that did cops, the comic book. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think they were under Marvel. There was only 12 issues they did anyways. Uh, yeah. Um, see, now, now I got old man foggy brain. I'm here looking right now. Um, I'm not seeing that right now. But okay, well, you know, we'll definitely bring back it up. We'll come back to that another time. Yeah, sorry. It, it was DC. So it was DC that did Cops. And I remember it because I like the cover artist because I know the artist. Uh, I think it was Bart Sears that did a couple of the um, covers or issues. And I like his drawing style. So, nice. yeah, it was DC. So okay. clearly G.I. Joe at the time was Marvel. Cops was DC. If they were probably under the same house of ideas, be it as DC or Marvel, and, and knowing this connection, they probably would have, you know, explored it a little bit more. But mm-hmm. here we go. So we're getting there. Yep, Lieutenant Falcon, Jinx, the whole nine yards, hit it, Rod. <laughs> so, yeah, basically now they're looking for, Beachhead is looking like, where's where's Lieutenant Falcon? So basically we find out that he's out on a date. He's bringing, <laughs> you know, he's bringing a, a, a lady that he's met, uh, a civilian, and bring her on the base and taking her to particular areas of, you know, where she shouldn't be, where he <laughs> shouldn't be bringing someone. And basically him just being a very, um, just trying to sway her in his particular way, He's basically giving out information by saying, yeah, oh, to get past here, oh, you need a certain particular, um, you know, particular coded disc, uh, you know, pass card to get in here. And uh, yeah, and, then and you know, oh, if you decide here, you know, you pass by here. I'm, I should be scared. Oh, don't be scared, girl. I got you. I'm a sharp shooter. Like, imagine, hey, Cobra, bam! And he starts shooting and ricocheting bullets all over the place. See the books over there? Bam! Cobra! And he's a you know, sharpshooter and all that kind of stuff, just trying to impress her. But then, unfortunately, he did something foolish, and uh, he got caught. Uh huh. Uh huh. He got caught. Yeah, yeah. He got caught. Busted. So, busted. 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 So Beachhead finds him like saying, "So sorry, wasn't Beachhead? It was Duke. Duke." Duke's like saying, "So why is the civilian here in a secure, you know, secure place, classified place?" Uh, uh, uh. Don't worry, she ain't seen nothing. She, she. Give me that camera. But she had a camera. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, don't worry about it. She didn't take no pictures. I don't believe it. Give me the camera and all that kind of stuff. So I know we're going to little detail, but the fact is, is now Falcon's in trouble because he got caught from Duke. At yep. this point, you see him as like saying J- Jinx was now there as well. Jinx, escort this lady off the base. Uh huh. As we do that, now Falcon is having an argument with Duke, but not realizing that that girl that he had, had escorted was actually the Baroness. No, time. no, that's the Baroness. Baroness comes later. No, no, sorry, sorry, it wasn't the Baroness. Sorry, my apologies. It was, it was uh, the dress not. It was uh, yeah, uh, from the Zantana team. My apologies. Right? Zarana, yeah, Zartana, Zartana. 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 Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the, Zartana's one sister. Of the yeah, Zartana's sister. So basically, she was the one who infiltrated uh, the camp and got all the information and how to access. Zarana, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get, yeah, get and, to Serpentorth and stuff like that. But it's funny, right? Oh. Because at this point, so now you brought in all these new characters for GI Joe. Right, new members. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see them interact a little bit, and the fact that that Don Johnson is doing the, the voice for Lieutenant Falcon. I get to that. Yep. You know so that's the big name, big name Don Johnson. Come on, man. Miami Vice man, Crockett and Tubbs man. 
Yeah, right? Actor for years. And if you if for, for people that might think Miami Vice is too old, if you're listening to this episode, then what you need to do is watch um the the yeah. Watchman series, the Watchmen series on uh, that came out okay. I think it was on yeah. HBO. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. You watch that series and Don Johnson's in there playing the police chief. The police chief, yep. So that's who Don Johnson is. If you want to know what he yeah. looks like, that's the character. Uh, the that's latest, the, uh, the latest, uh, the latest, yeah, uh, one of the most popular latest um, spots that he did. Right prior to yeah. that would have been Nash Bridges. I don't know. Yeah, Nash Bridges exactly. Nash Bridges. If to watch Nash Bridges, you got him from there too. But definitely the police chief in um, in Watchmen, the series. Nice, good. Call. Yeah, good yeah. Call. You know, so he gets escorted out. Uh, you know, Zorana goes back because um, we didn't know it's her. She just drives off. Ha ha ha. Gets there. She gets to you know. Uh, uh, a river or lake comes out the car, takes off her clothes. Mm-hmm. She's in a bikini, and then you got uh one of the other newer dreadnoughts or uh, uh, Zanzibar shows up, and or no, it was Thrasher. Thrasher shows up, and he mm-hmm. starts talking to trying to pick her up. She flips him, throws him in the water. He's like, "What are you doing?" And then she takes off the wig, and he's like, oh, "Zorana," because he realizes who he was trying to pick up. And it was like, "Uh oh, I didn't know it was you." And she, and then of course her brother shows up, her other brother shows up, the rest of the dreadnoughts show up. They're like, "Ah," it's like you know, she goes back talking the way she talks, that kind of broken English. So they got the the, the, the blueprints that you know, and all the thing they need to break out Pentor, right? Mm-hmm. So at one point now, you know, my man womanizing Lieutenant Falcon goes back. He sees Jinx. He's trying to pick her up. Say, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna be so." How would I explain the story about Heather? You're just going to be like, oh, that's so crazy. It's not what it looked like. Da, 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 da. And she's like, aren't you supposed to be on guard duty? And he breaks down all the steps that anyone would need to do <laughs> to get past. And, and when he's explaining it, it's actually happening. It's like, they got to go through all these defenses, a plastic shield. Uh, then they got to go through, you know, concrete and, this, and three feet of steel and concrete. And then they got to go through three of our best guys. Uh, and then there's an alarm system. And sure enough, when he's talking, you, they're doing the flashes of how you know the, the, the Zartan, the Dreadnoughts, Nemesis Enforcer is getting through, is getting through all getting the getting through all the defenses, and where he should have been to actually see them and hit the alarm, he wasn't there. Okay, so fight breaks out. They break out the Pentor. The other Joes in there get uh, hurt and put in the infirmary. So I remember it was Gunho, Alpine, and Bazooka. Yeah, Bazooka is just a tad above Big Lob. So. <laughs> <laughs> right just a tad um uh, so they get hurt you know court martial comes about because now you know uh duke shows up hawk shows up uh hawk is really pissed at the whole situation court martial for lieutenant falcon they're about to court martial him and it said look we looked at your record to see if we had any redeeming qualities there was none so this is what's going to happen we are going to court martial you the person that saved him is duke Duke. Mm-hmm. Duke stands up and says, hey, look, you know what? Give him a chance. I know there's a good soldier in there. How do you know that? How do you know that, Duke? He's my half-brother. <gasps> Mouth drop. M- Mouth drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It, it, so, the half-brother. Oh, okay. And, 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 they, and they go and they play with that. And that's when he gets sent off to the slaughterhouse. And that's when they bring in, you know, Sergeant Slaughter playing Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> well, you know, make it easy for him. Let's just yeah. make it easy. Sorry, Sergeant Slaughter, voiced by WWF at the time, Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter, right. Right, right, or WWE. I think I'm not sure they're both that transition time. But yeah, and then they bring in three other characters, you know, um, at the time. One of them was, ex, you know, uh, Cobra ex, Viper. Ex Cobra. Mm-hmm. A footballer um, and a yep. circus performer. But don't, don't, the guy's bald beard, yeah. you know, he's got a sword. And um, the, the renegade, I think they were called the renegades, or yeah, the renegades. They were renegades. Yep. Right. The three of them, and that's so he gets he joins up with the renegades. He starts training with them like hardcore, you know. Uh, at this point, Sapender gets out, goes talk, and, and we'll speed this up. We'll say you know, goes talk to Globalist, the, the whole back and forth, and then we get back to Cobra Commander, and the whole plan is for Globalist. He's like, well, I'm offended by Earth's technology. You guys use inanimate objects to get around while we use organic objects to be our kind of motorcycles and our planes and so forth. So we're going to release these spores in the air that were developed by one of our lords and scientists, which was Cobra Commander. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, his face got disfigured. He looked more of a normal face, even though he's from a different race. What? Rhyming. And when this thing blew up in his face, it gave it mutated him. So it changed his skin a little bit. It gave him extra eyes. This is why he puts on the mask. Uh, they exposed him to the same mask, to sh- I mean, sorry, mask, uh, the same spore to accelerate the mutation. So this, he, he literally starts to turn into a giant snake. Wow. 
you know, the arm starts shrinking. And he turns it, he's literally turning into a giant cobra. His mind is going, once a man. I was, on, I was once a man. I was once a man. You know, gets up with Roadblock, him and Roadblock escape. Um, and they're trying to find the rest of the Joes. The Joes are trying to find Roadblock and the other Joes that are mm-hmm. missing. And, and then it gets to the end with this big explosive. So I know we jumped a lot here, but it, the, the, the key part is it showed what they were trying to do. I, I like the voices. I like the motivation of the characters. What was funny is now, you know, everyone's out coming to the rescue. So, you know, um, you know, we, we're, we're skipping a part where Sergeant Slaughter and the Renegades break into the mm. Terra Dome. <laughs> and, and this was funny. It's like, you know, Sergeant Slaughter's like, okay, guys, we got our new orders. We got to get into the Terra Dome and find out where they're holding the rest of the Joes to see if they have any information, Right. And they're like, oh. And then Lieutenant Falcon, Falcon. is so cocky. <laughs> He's like, hey, he yeah, training exercise. <laughs> Why do we make it interesting? Why do we leave all our weapons behind? Sergeant Slaughter, I like it. No weapons. The rest of the team, like, oh. Dang it. <laughs> like, sorry, guys. I was just, I was just joking. I think you'll take me serious. Man, boy. Every classroom has one. <laughs> Right, every classroom has one, and before you say Barry, you mean class clown? No, they have oh. that too because that was me. But every class has that other person, that other student that's going to sit there, and the teacher's going to start. And then let's say the class talks too much, and it's like, I want you guys to be settled down or quiet, or you guys are going to get an exam. And that one student puts up his hands, like, You know what, miss? We should just do the exam. You want an exam? Yes, I'm ready for an exam because I want the extra credits. And then you have all the other students. Look at that student. Uh, and the guess pan, who? The pan view. The pan view. Yeah, the pan view. And guess who, what happens to that one student? Well, he either gets you know pushed in a locker, pantsed in the hallway, or his head put into the toilet. I'm not condoning that, and I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that's what's happened in the past when you got that one student. You know, he's a like. Hey, guys, what do you want to do today? You guys want to um, just kind of read a book or you want to do extra credit for a test? Oh, let's do the test. All right, the test it is, guys. <gasps> I Come on, man. Did you have one guy like that in your class? Of course. I can't remember right now the particular moment in time. Uh, but yeah, there's, 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 there's like, I, I can see, but I couldn't remember the name, but I can see him. I was like, yeah. There's always one. Like you said, there's always it's, one. There's always one. And let me tell you something right now. If you said there was no one in your class that way, you were that it was person. Me. <laughs> well, I, I, I was, that's why I was had to pause. And I'm thinking, no, nah, that wouldn't be me. I know myself. I'd be like, extra, what? Listen, everybody keep quiet or extra work. <laughs> I don't even want to breathe. <laughs> oh, noise. <laughs> I'm breathing through one nostril every 20 seconds. Oh, stay awake. Stay conscious. Don't fall. Fall. Make noise. No. <laughs> no, exactly. So that was Lieutenant Falcon. And, and, and it goes back to that. So they go, they do this whole thing. They G.I. Joe finds where they all are, right? Mm-hmm. And it breaks into the fight. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's happened at this point, but you know. Uh, no, I think it was just a little before. This is a little before, uh, you know. Yeah, this uh, is this is how they get captured. This is when they get captured, and this is when Roadblock was with them with Cobra Commander, and they were trying to make a break for it. Uh oh, sorry, no, no, because no, they were already captured. So Roadblock yes. wasn't there at that time. At that time, my apologies. I jumped ahead to the to the second to the first escape. So basically, they came in and they basically assumed like, okay, this is like, oh, with all those trees and all that kind of stuff, and not realizing that they were basically walking into an ambush, and uh, basically. Before they got to the trees, all the Krobola, all the all their their soldiers now, yes, who are all bug eyed and everything, are coming out from underneath the snow and start attacking him, whatever the case to be. And now this is when you get to see the power of Krobola versus GI Joe, and yes. then you realizing that basically GI Joe's like, nah, this Cobra, we take them out like this every week. We have these guys for breakfast. Yeah, really though, it's like it's like someone like Menacing Force who's grunting. He's like he's grunting the words. Roll my beer. Roll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just goes and starts. Bah, bah, Ma- bah. He mashed them up. He mashed them up. The, the, the Cobra Law troopers mashed them up. 
you know, Serpentor is there. Serpentor gets into, a, I think it was that particular scene. And if it's um, out of sequence, I apologize. But at one point, him and um, Duke get into a scene and start going, a fight going back into it, right? Mm-hmm. Duke, yeah. So Duke and Serpentor start getting into a fight. Uh, at one point, you know, um, he, he, he throws him aside. He starts fighting with, I oh, don't sorry. It was Serpentor and Falcon getting into a fight. Turns right. out, takes off one of his snakes, turns into spear, goes, throws it. And Duke comes running in going, no! And Duke literally took the bullet. Duke takes the shot right in the chest, right by the heart. The snake goes in mm-hmm. there, like a spear. Falcon's like, no! Goes, pulls it out, bleeding, okay? And, and then the music changes. Very somber music changes. Very similar to when Optimus Prime was killed in the Transformers, the movie. Uh, right. You know? And that's when he started to go down. So the music uh... changes. And at that point, Okay, Duke's talking, talking, and his voice gets lower and lower. Everyone's kind of sad and somber, and boom, that's it. Luke, sorry, Duke is supposed to be dead. Right. What I mean is, and if you heard me in previous episodes, mm-hmm. the original plan was they were going to kill off Duke, right? But because of Transformers the movie, how it traumatized kids to see Optimus Prime die when they went in there with their parents. The parents went... Uh, and protest, well, not protest, but they were angry and wrote letters. wrote letters. No emails. You heard me say this before. They went, they got, you know, envelope, paper, pen, wrote it down, sealed it up, lick it, put a stamp on it, send it. It's not enough postage. Come back, put another stamp on it, send it again. A department had to read all the flood of letters coming in saying, how dare you do that to my child? Like, we went there for a good f- film experience. And now my mm-hmm. child is upset that you killed off Optimus Prime. Traumatized. traumatized. The words traumatized were used. So... When G.I. Joe the movie was coming out, they they the movie they they realized is like we can't do what mm-hmm. Transformers mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was a last minute decision <laughs> to say, okay, you don't see Duke in the rest of the movie, but they changed the dialogue. And I know I'm jumping ahead. They, they changed yeah. the dialogue at the end to say, oh, he was in a coma. So when he was there, they took him away. You don't see him, but they say, oh, Duke's in a coma. And okay. And then at the end of the movie, hey guys. Duke's out of a coma. Yay! That's how they save themselves. And then, and then showing Duke in the new season, we knew he was back. Right. Right. But that, that's what it led up to. So that whole fight leads up to, it, it was almost a, a time variant situation. <laughs> because crazy. we could have done a what if Duke died. How would that have really affected the team? Right? Because he was a key character. That, 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 that could have been a time variant right there you know that would have changed up the on this on the screen the love triangle between you know or for him and, and scarlet the, the, the dynamic of the gi joe team would falcon take mm-hmm. his you know there, there's so many possibilities that we won't see but hasbro just said put the brakes we ain't doing this one no no more killing off oh, no, characters no, no, no. no more killing we learned off from last year we learned from last year mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. we learned her last year our department is still crying and they're still reading writing back you know letters of apology to all the parents even though this, see, we hear the, yeah. the, that that department, mm-mm, mm-mm, they didn't want to mm-hmm. see this movie. <laughs> they heard something about we thought about killing him off. They quit. So, no, 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 no. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> you guys, you guys, figure figure that one out. So, you know that that was a, I think it was a smart move. I don't want to see Duke die. I, I definitely, I, I, I'm, I mean, I was more older. I wasn't a kid, but seeing Optimus Prime die, I was like, ah, oh, I understand what their overall yeah. plan was, but Rodimus wasn't played out the way he he was advertised to be a certain way but in the series that they played him out he was overly whiny and i yeah. didn't want that to follow gi joe so yeah you know it, you can't kill off duke um and and that's where it's a lot different in the comic books i mean duke doesn't die in the comic book but duke's got a different history in the comic book as opposed to uh the movie so the movie and when <laughs> yes i will keep writing this till this episode's done and when we get up there uh, to the end of it, you know, so the big fight happens, this happens, everyone's dead, and then they find out the true plan of Cobra, the sports are going up, they got to get the broadcast energy transmitter, they got to overload it, and it comes down to a couple of key characters, and this is where I think they were trying to pass the torch, because the original plan was, as I keep repeating myself, Duke was supposed to be dead. Right. His half-brother, Lieutenant Falcon, is now stepping mm-hmm. up his game. Right. And Lieutenant Falcon, along with Jinx, you know, are fighting globalists. None of the Joes we've known before. They're really focusing on the new characters to come and save the day. 
you know, mm-hmm. um, and that turns into a big fight at the end. The, the, the broadcast energy transmitter, Lieutenant Falcon and, and Serpentor are at it. You know, they're fighting. Jinx is fighting Pythona. Globulus is sitting there going, ah, looking at a stick with a worm going up it, you know, and, and they come down and say, okay, we've stopped it. Now we got to overload the spores that are up there, explode them and let them burn up. Okay, cool. G.I. Joe wins the day. Cool. And, and the action sequences at the end, they showed a lot of characters, you know, fighting in their own styles. Mm-hmm. They, you know, good, bad from G.I. Joe, Cobra, Cobra Law. It was it was a big ending. I was happy was, yeah. with the introduction of Cobra Law characters and how it was going to go. The question was what we were going to do after that. But up to that point, up to the credits, I was happy. And that's what said, oh, Duke's alive. <laughs> no, it's serious. Yeah, I, I was, I, the, the, the final sequence was very intense. They made sure that they had certain characters uh connect and fight yes. like even like so nemesis enforcer had an issue and fight with sergeant slaughter in a previous altercation <laughs> yeah this is one time sergeant Slaughter was like everybody find a friend leave him for me i'm like okay he's kind of like we're coming back for round two and then he basically whooped ne- menaces enforcer and then when menace enforcer is on the floor like he's on his back <sighs> Sergeant Slaughter is now jumping around, like jumping from the, literally, this is where WWE, WWF yes, starts yes. flying in. This guy is coming off from the top, imagining off the top balcony, like saying, this is for Duke. Bam, from the chest, on the chest. Then he jumps back up again. This is for Falcon. Bam. And gives him an elbow this strike. Is, right this, is, this is for the US of A. Bam. I'm like, straight, straight, di- dial- Wrestling. It's a dial. It's a dialogue he uses at the show on, the on WWE. It's the same dialogue. It was. Yes. It made me weak with laughter. I'm like thinking, well, we could take the slaughter. We take the slaughter from the ring, but we can't take the ring. No, we could take the. We could take. We could take the ring from the slaughter, but we can't take the slaughter from the ring. That's, That's all it right. was, man. That's, That's what it was. right. It was weak. I'm like, okay, cool. I got you. I it got was you. awesome. And they said, so for those watching the video, you know, um, I got to give a shout out to my to my little brother Brian. You know, mm. I, I, yeah, I, I know my ring light might kind of cut off some of the the, the what I'm steering here. So I'm going to move this here. Right there. No, no, you're good. Right there. There we go. There we right go. There. there we go. Yeah, yeah. So Brian got me this beautiful, you know, nice. for my birthday a couple of years ago, uh, deluxe edition Snake Eyes for the G.I. Joe. Not the movie, nice. just G.I. Joe classic series from Hasbro. Mm. That, the, the, that's just the box that looks that sweet. And that's why I'm holding this box, right? Not because we're talking about G.I. Joe the movie, but mysteriously, out of all the Joes they showed, all the characters that were were all the characters that were in there, you don't see Snake Eyes. Right. I don't know if that was a constant decision. And part of me, I, I think I like it, and I'm not sure if I it's like a yes or no. I like Snake Eyes as a character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Snake Eyes does come the dominant character for G.I. Joe at one point in a comic book, right? But right. yeah, this, this box is sweet, man. I mean, even the uh, the, the, yeah, uh, so he becomes a dominant character. So he overwhelms, and a lot of stories came around Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes, yeah. In the comic book, at one point, literally at one point in the comic book, it was called Snake Eyes and GI Joe. Hmm. You know, it was almost when they did that X Men run. At one point, they had one of the X Men cartoons, and it was called Wolverine and X-Men. the X Men. Mm-hmm. You know, same kind of aspect to it. Um, I was like, come on now, you know, don't don't do that to me. It, this this box has so much art inside of it. It is sick, right? Um, and 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 that's piece after piece, you know. And then you got the cream of the resistance, as I like to call it. So you got mm. Snake Eyes in there, still in the box. I never took him out, you know. I never will. This is how I roll. The set comes with you know all his weapons, a weapon stand for Snake Eyes to hold all his weapons. So the reason I'm mentioning it is because. Since Snake Eyes was not really in G.I. Joe the movie, and we're talking about G.I. Joe the movie, I'm going to show Snake Eyes, <laughs> give him at least a couple of seconds of, uh, you know, a uh, uh, guest appearance. Guest appearance. You know? well, that's it. I, they didn't put him in. Like you, you did, I didn't see Snake Eyes. Um, I think I saw a brief scene with Storm Shadow, you know, but you didn't see Snake Eyes at all in this, in this movie. And I thought, oh, that's a shame. You know, the character is that popular, but they... they you know, he showed up in other stuff, and he was flipping cool. Like, even the back of this box is sick. 
right? right? Um, so I, I, you got to give him due. I mean, you know, you can't turn around and not have the character in there somewhere. But I just thought that was it, that was a bummer that they didn't really give him more. Oh, there's more in here. I never really looked at this stuff in this year. I got to open this box maybe one day, once a year. Um, so I, 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 I don't know why that decision was. I mean, I know there's a lot of Joes. Everyone has their favorite. Everyone wants to see their character in there. I was happy to see uh, Tomax, you know, Zaymot, Tomax, uh, Zartan, the Dreadnoughts. I was good enough with that. I almost didn't realize, I almost kind of forgot when you watch the movie that you don't see Storm Shadow, really, or you don't see Snake Eyes. Right. You know, if he's in there, it's really a quick scene, but you don't see any focus on him. So, like you said, maybe is as again because he's already been known as being a dominant character and has always drawn people in. He's going to pull off the focus from what the story they were trying to do. Because the whole focus, like you said, is to introduce a possibility. Well, bringing in new characters, but maybe the possibility of hand, you know, you know, passing of the torch. And yeah, if you're going to exactly. have Snake Eyes there, it's going to kind of throw off the whole momentum of thinking. Okay, well, if we're supposed to do that, technically. If, if it was the fan being the fan's favorite, if Duke was gone, Snake Eyes should be the one they would assume people would want to take up the realm. Yeah, the only hard thing is, is that Snake Eyes doesn't speak, right? So there's right. it would have been hard to probably push that dialogue. So I, exactly. that I can understand that part of it, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, and they figured that out, you know, later on. So um, and then another interesting part, what I mean, I always found interesting, and this is going back to the TV series, is we all know. At the time the TV series came out, okay, Snake Eyes is a commando, but then he got more into his ninja uh, roots. Gave him the sword, gave him timber, made him really cool. Mm-hmm. Man in black, okay, gotcha. And, and, and a lot of the times you watch the series, Snake Eyes does not fight Storm Shadow. It's Spirit. Hmm. Spirit is the one that ends up fighting Storm Shadow a lot. If you look at all of them when they're looking at certain, you know, if you go back, it's always Spirit and Storm Shadow that were always at odds with each other. And at times they worked together and at other times they fought each other. But it wasn't the typical, you know, in the comic book, they kind of went to Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, right? Mm-hmm. And they have that one beautiful cover where you have the two of them come breaking into a door. And I was like, one of the 47 or 46 issue of the G.I. Joe, the series. But with with uh, the, com- the cartoon series, you never really see Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow fight each other it starts off with spirit then at one point they kind of flip over to quick kick fighting storm shadow right never never snake eyes and that's why I, I always found a little bit weird or different and i'm like all right uh, I, they do what they want to do but you know they, and to me that would have been an easy rivalry later on yes if you watch the more later like gi joe renegades yes they do put the two of them at odds if you watch gi joe um uh retaliation that, that movie oh absolutely there's a full snake eyes storm shadow piece and i think we got to talk about yeah. that one day but mm. in the original series nope those two are never together hmm. never never not you know not not how we know them like you know it's like you think batman joker you think superman lex luther you know uh spider-man green goblin you think mm-hmm, storm mm-hmm, shadow mm-hmm, you think mm-hmm, snake mm-hmm, eyes and storm mm-hmm. shadow yeah it's, it's, it's the it's the pairing it's the pairing it's the opposite the yin and the yang these are the yin and the yang for each other on each opposing team yeah so you would expect that they always be always going against each other at absolutely. some point in time. But yeah, it's interesting. You're absolutely yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is what it is, man. This, this mm-hmm. is that's my take on it. And as I said it has that wicked theme song, <laughs> absolutely beautiful theme song. So that there brings us, I guess, to the end of this GI Joe the movie. Rod, you got All any right. final thoughts on this? Or any parts um, you think we missed you want to touch on real quick? Let's see. First, uh, I think we missed. We talked about Sarge and Slaughter just beating up Nemesis Enforcer. Um, yeah. The only thing is we never uh, see the Renegades again. <laughs> really and truly, yeah. We don't see them again. Um, I can't remember if they picked up Cobra. You know, Cobra Commander turned into a snake, and that was the end of him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about the, the gist of the movie. But, yeah, the, the movie itself was, was very enlightening and very um, – it was definitely – a different at that time if you want to say hey we need to do something a next level than what we currently have mm-hmm. this was it this yeah. was going the sci-fi aspect of it and just going completely not far left 
or far right. It was just like, I never would have thought of putting those two together. And it was a good way that, that at least they built it. They gave Cobra, the entity itself, a deeper mythology in the back end, basically saying that they were they were kind of born or raised in through Cobra that yep. Garbalis had basically sent Cobra Commander out into the world to try to raise the ability so they can come and take over for global con- conquest. So yeah, because they, they don't want the people to build machines anymore. Right. Yeah. So that was that was a good thing like that. So basically with that and just seeing how G.I. Joe will interact on a sci-fi aspect of it, a more, you know, a very, very, you know, very intense sci-fi aspect. Yeah, they did good. They did good. It was definitely for the time at the time. It was good. It's definitely good nostalgia, good memories, and just basically bringing you into this world of, hmm, it's not only global, it's global, you know, takeover that they're trying to do, but realizing, oh, why would they want to take over the world? This is the reason why. That's the motivation. Exactly. And that was the motivation. That yep. was the motivation. So it was good to like, ah, oh, I see. There was such a deeper cut that not even, not even the first lieutenants or the board members of Cobra knew what was going on. That nope. were being watched over and held and directed by Cobra. La, la, la. <laughs> Cobra, okay. la, la, la. Yep. Well, I, 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 I hear you, man. I'll leave you with these two tidbits. One, uh, Cobra La was not supposed to be their original name, right? Mm-hmm. When they wrote out the script, they just didn't know what to put. So they said, anytime they're referring to Cobra La, they just wrote, okay, Cobra, Cobra La. They wrote it there. That wasn't supposed to be the name. But then the higher executives said, oh, Cobra La? We like it. Keep it. So that's how Cobra La came to be. Because they didn't have a name for Globalis and his you know, his, his team, team is. right? Mm-hmm. So they said Cobra Law. They just put it like, oh, Cobra, Cobra Law. So we did, you know, when they're writing the script. Distinction. The distinction. And it just ended up staying there, right? The, the higher ups said, we like the name Cobra Law. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going with it. And they're like, uh, okay. And two, Larry Hama, um, Larry Hanna, who was the guy who pretty much wrote the bulk. If you had to look at G.I. Joe, the, the comic book um, as a whole, I would say, you know, he had a written, you know, uh, easy 85 90 percent of these the 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 books because like he wrote he did them all for marvel and then when Mm -hmm. when gi joe left marvel and went to doubles do and then idw he kind of came back and started writing the 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 stories again so every time the the hasbro came up to him it's like we have a new batch of characters we need you to put into the storyline he would have to always write and put them in when they came up to him with okay globalist and and all that he was like no it was very rare he said no he goes there's some characters he didn't like but when they like, changed up Cobra Commander and they're bringing in Globalis, and he found it kind of foolish. And another mm-hmm. one of the other writers kind of agreed to him, agreed with him also. I mean, they did, he also found it foolish. Not that they both of them talked together. And this was a, an idea they both talked, like how me and you were talking. They, right. they were separately and said, no, we don't like it. This is why they said they will never bring in Globalis, you know, and anything with Cobra Law into the G.I. Joe comic books. Right. They, they were drawn in at one point, but Larry Hanna, never had any intention of getting rid of Cobra Commander. He had no intention um, of getting rid, uh, of bringing in Globalist, Nemesis of Forest, or Python, none of them, none of them. Right. If you look, right. they're not there. Anytime he's writing it, they're not there. Uh, so that, that I thought was another interesting tidbit right there. <laughs> Woo! Here we are. It's a, it was a little bit of a long one, but a fun one. This there is what we go. did in two parts. So on behalf of myself, Barry 3D, mm. and always on my side, the one and only DJ Rossi. That be me. <laughs> Woo! This is the Iconist Podcast. Thank you for supporting. Mm. If you can help the channel grow, please do so. Uh, we really appreciate it. And like, subscribe, and share. Don't let this channel be a secret. Get it out there. Get the likes up. Let's have some fun. Put your comments in the you know uh, in 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 a, in a section below, right? put them in below and uh yeah we're signing off for the evening have yourself a good night make it cobra la <laughs> and if you have the gi joe theme song stuck in your head cobra uh you're welcome there you go <laughs> so, cobra, la, ta, 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 la. and this truly as i always say was started with a pencil a piece of paper and imagination keep on dreaming do it cobra cobra, cobra. crashing through the night (laughs) yeah it's in your head too rod
<laughs> I know it is. It is. It is. Thanks a lot. Very appreciate it. Now I'm gonna have to go and remix it. Thanks a lot. It's been a while since I played it. I guess I'll be playing it sometime this weekend. Thanks a lot. Very appreciate it. Excuses, I'm out. <laughs>